I'm Dr. Ken Landa. Let's talk about Zyfaxin. Zyfaxin is an oral antibiotic that's non-absorbable. Gets into your gut and stays there, doesn't get into the bloodstream. It just received approval in May of 2015 for treating the diarrhea stage of irritable bowel syndrome. Previously, it had been available for treating hepatic encephalopathy, that's brain disease associated with liver malfunction, or for treating traveler's diarrhea. But with regard to irritable bowel syndrome, it's a very common condition, estimated one in seven to one in 10 adults suffer from that condition. We don't know what causes it, but at least a small percentage of cases might have their diarrhea symptoms associated with an overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. We have several different types of irritable bowel syndrome. We have the type associated with diarrhea, another associated with constipation, and then still others vary between the two. How do we make the diagnosis? Well, we do it by what's called the Rome Convention. We have a group of doctors who got together and they came up with a definition for the condition, a definition that requires you have at least 12 weeks during the past year of abdominal pain or discomfort, or maybe just three days per month for at least three months of the same kind of symptoms, abnormal bowel frequency, either too much or too little, abnormal bowel form, either hard and lumpy or loose and watery, and then abnormal passage. Maybe you have to strain or you have a feeling of incomplete evacuation. Maybe you have some mucus, maybe some bloating or abdominal distension. Well, with regard to treatment, even though Zyfaxin is an antibiotic, we don't know that it's really working by killing bugs. We don't know why it works. If you take it for irritable bowel syndrome associated with diarrhea, you take three pills a day, you do that for 14 days, you can either take it with or without food, and if necessary, if the symptoms recur, as they probably will, then you can take up to a total of three courses per year. Question is, after you take the pill, after you take the Zyfaxin, then the study looked at your response. So how beneficial was the pill? Did you improve? Did you get adequate relief of the symptoms after you took the pill? Well, slightly more than 40% of the people said yes, indeed they did, but more than 30% of the people taking placebo thought they got better. And if we combine, does the stool have more consistency? Is the diarrhea improved? And is the pain improved? Well, then when we look at the pill, if we look at Zyfaxin, uh, about 47% of the people improve versus almost 40% of the people taking a placebo. And in trial three, we have a situation where the people were given the medicine, less than 50% of the people improved, and then they were followed along until they developed recurrent symptoms. They developed recurrent symptoms after an average of about 10 weeks so they were symptom free or symptom improved for about two and a half months. Then they were asked, well, what about a combination of the diarrhea and the pain? Was it improved? And on the people who took the Zyfaxin, about 38% said, yes, indeed, they were improved versus over 30% of the people taking placebo. Side effects, not really significant. In some people, there's a little bit of nausea. Or some people, they have some abnormalities of some of the blood tests. Interestingly, some people develop a type of diarrhea because of the pill, and a small number of people develop hypersensitivity reaction. Well, this drug was originally produced by a company known as Salix Pharmaceuticals out of Raleigh, North Carolina. They were purchased in 2015 by Valiant for $11 billion, $11 billion in cash. Now, Zyfaxin accounted for about 70% of the sales of Salix Pharmaceuticals. And as a matter of fact, the sales seem to have been falling or predicted to fall because that brain disorder I talked to you about a moment ago associated with liver abnormality. Well, now that we have treatment for hepatitis C, the number of people developing that condition is decreasing. Now, Valiant Pharmaceuticals, remember that's the company that has an SEC investigation, the Congress is investigating them, they have the Attorney General of Massachusetts investigating them, they have the federal attorney from the Southern District of New York investigated them. 
for unethical activities, for price raising, for all sorts of things. Well, the company, the day after they took Salix, fired about 258 employees, and they found out, unfortunately for them, that they actually, Salix, didn't sell as many pills as they thought they were going to. Well, according to the CEO of Valiant, Mr. Michael Pearson, he said that they're going to take the same sort of approach they did to Jublia to market it. They're going to turbocharge it. But now, look, Jublia doesn't work very well, and it's horribly overpriced. Well, I don't know if that's what he's talking about doing with Zyfaxin, but uh, first commercial, or one of the first commercials, was on the Super Bowl. Well, how much does the drug cost? Zyfaxin costs about $1,600 cash. Now, what they've done is they've taken another antibiotic called rifampin that's dirt cheap. And what they did is they simply added a pyridoimmunozole ring to it and took it from a few dollars up to $1,600 a course. Well, according to them, hey, we have a copay card, so you don't have to pay any cash. We're just going to stick it all to your insurance company. Well, according to the medical letter, that's an unbiased medical review, they say that Zyfaxin is only modestly more effective than a placebo. They say that relapse is common. It's horribly expensive. And some people might say it's too doggone expensive for what you get. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.